Many Magic the Gathering players asked the question, is it worth it to buy a Magic Origins Deck Builders Toolkit? Deck Builders Toolkits are often how many people begin their Magic the Gathering journey. But are they really the best way for new players to start out? And what about for casual players looking to continue building their library or to just get some fun kitchen table games? Is a toolkit something for them? Let's take a look. Now, since I have looked at toolkits previously from the perspective of a new player looking to eventually attend standard Friday Night Magic, my video of which can be seen here. For this video, I will focus on a much more casual perspective. If you are curious whether a toolkit is good for someone to begin the journey to FNM, I suggest viewing my previous toolkit video. This video, as I said, will look at a more casual perspective. A deck builder's toolkit contains the following. So we have four packs of magic cards, a pile of basic lands, and a semi-random collection of commons and uncommons, as well as five additional rares. Before I get into the new and casual perspective and use of these toolkits, I do need to point out one important thing. In regards to the sets that these booster packs are from, the selection of booster packs contained within a toolkit appear to be semi-random, meaning that while you'll always get at least one Magic Origins booster pack, the others are going to vary wildly. So here I have a Journey into Nyx booster pack, a Cons of Tarkir booster pack, a Fate Reforged booster pack, and an Origins booster. But your toolkit might have a Theros, a Born of the Gods, and two Origins boosters. To me, this is one of the biggest cons about these toolkits. I would say that ideally they should all be Magic Origins boosters, or failing that, there should be no boosters from the block that is about to rotate out, in this case the Theros block. Even if a player has no intention of going to Friday Night Magic, Standard still reigns supreme as the most popular and commonly played constructed format. To give a supposed new player packs that will not be allowed in Standard within a few months is just a major mistake. Ideally, this toolkit should simply have contained four packs of Origins, or failing that nothing older than the Tarkir block. What would happen if this toolkit I had just opened had stayed on the shelf for a few more months, and then someone who wanted to get started in magic had picked it up and bought it? They might be opening packs not even allowed in standard anymore. And so as I said, this is one of the biggest cons. But I don't want to talk about this any further from that standard FNM perspective. Let's take a more casual look at this. Are these decks fun to build from and play with? Yes, but the key is that they have to be played against themselves. Deck Builders Toolkits make for enjoyable games of casual magic, but only if your friend has constructed their deck from a toolkit as well. If you build a deck from a toolkit and then sit down to play against, say, a dual deck or a standard deck, or even a casual deck, but one that's been built up and worked on over the years, then you are not going to have a good time. You have to play the deck builder's toolkits against each other. So the key here is balance, making sure both you and your opponent had the exact same starting point.
What about financial value? In terms of just walking into a game store and buying four packs of Magic cards, at the usual price of $4 each, those four packs would cost you $16. The Deck Builder's Toolkit has an MSRP of $19.99, meaning that for your additional $3.99 you get a supply of land, a modest pile of commons and uncommons, five rares that, while fun, are considered by the larger Magic player base to be bulk, and the toolkit box itself, which actually is a pretty good storage box. So financially speaking, you are not losing money on a toolkit if you compare it to what you would have paid just to walk into your local game store and pick up these individual packs and pieces. But is this really the most effective use of your cash? For example, for $10 more, you can purchase a Clash pack. And while the quality of these will vary from set to set, the current one has a large selection of non-bulk rares that are both powerful and play and strong trade items, as well as coming with its own large library of commons and uncommons, and yeah, a few bulk rares. Now, that being said, a Clash Pack is a predetermined deck. It's pre-constructed, and while you can make a few variations of it to play with your friends, it would be highly unenjoyable for, say, you and several of your friends to each buy your own Clash Pack to play against each other. It's the same combination of cards. I like building decks. And although I think the financial value and trade value and just power level of a clash pack is far, far superior to that of a toolkit, I do not feel that the toolkit is a loss of any actual cash. And in terms of building decks from it, there's always my absolute favorite use of a toolkit as well. And that is Toolkit Leagues. A growing trend at many stores is to hold Toolkit Leagues. This is a great way for experienced players to get a lot of fun from a toolkit. That's right, I said for experienced players to get fun from a toolkit. As well as providing new and returning players a great training ground to acclimate to the game and meet their community. I love League and I love Toolkit Leagues. A toolkit league works very much like a regular league, only instead of opening six packs of magic cards, you open and construct your league deck from a deck builder's toolkit. Players then battle their toolkit decks against one another, and over the course of a season they can earn anything from additional packs to add to their deck, to possibly even free entries to draft and at FNM. It depends on the store. But stores do like toolkit leagues because it keeps their player community connected and in store. And I imagine it's also a great way to ensure those toolkits sell since experienced players enjoy toolkit league as well, but don't typically have other reasons to buy a toolkit. As for me, I love Toolkit League because it means there's a playing field where everyone's deck is not only equal, but also much more casual. Yeah, it's still organized in the store, but it's a lot more fun oriented. And even if your store doesn't have its own Toolkit League, you and several of your friends can organize your own. Whenever I hear of Magic Clubs buying a bunch of dual decks to split up between players and get games with, I always urge them to try getting each player a toolkit instead. With those dual decks, multiple people in the club are going to have the same deck. That's no fun to play against repeatedly. It's no fun in a mirror matchup. Not really, maybe once. But with the Toolkit League, there's going to be enough variation in those decks. People are building their own decks, customizing them. It's just the way to go. One thing that has been on my mind lately is wondering where the Deck Builder's Toolkit is going to go from here. This is the final core set, but I imagine Wizards will still release toolkits as a yearly product. So with that in mind, what will next year's toolkit look like? Well, I'd love to see an overhaul where at least we get all packs from the same set, and possibly even add an extra pack or two. I have a bad feeling that we'll see more of the same semi-randomness, with standard block sets now rotating more often, it's going to be even more disheartening to me if I see booster packs from old sets and future toolkits. In all honesty, a pre-release kit has more to teach a new player about magic, in that they are intended for an actual deck type to be built, and more value for all players, in that brand new and experienced players will get great value from pre-release kits, and more financially valuable and playable cards. While casual games of toolkit versus toolkit are indeed 
indeed a lot of fun, and I am also a big fan of stores that have toolkit leagues, ultimately, I still don't feel a toolkit is the best use of your cash. It's not a waste of it like with an intro pack, but there's still more effective ways you can spend your money. For a little bit more, you can have a clash pack. If your timing is right, you can attend pre-release, which would be my number one pick. And if that's not possible, then at the end of the day, I'd still just suggest a brand new player try buying six packs from the latest set and building their own sealed constructed deck as a great entry into the game. Does your store have a toolkit league? What about just a regular league? Do you feel that this is an appropriate environment for new and returning players to learn and acclimate to the game? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, share, or just by leaving a comment. This video was sponsored by you, you the viewer, viewing this video and for many of you being patrons over at Patreon of my channel and of my videos. You are what has brought this channel to the screen and I thank you for that.